Leviathan here, as you can tell, that was an extremely close call that could have ended tragically wrong. So today, I'm gonna share both perspectives as to what happened, so you can decide who would have been at fault. Let's go for a cruise. My heart is still racing from that experience, but I will do my best to capture both perspectives, starting with my own. I was out for a fairly spirited, but not dangerous, drive with a friend of mine who was in a Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster, the loudest one on earth. We were cruising on a three-lane highway, and I was on the passing lane with the intent to merge onto the center lane. This is a very basic maneuver that we've all done thousands of times, as I will demonstrate the four-step process. Step one, check your mirror. Step two, indicate. Step three, check your blind spot and then start to merge onto the center lane. However, as I was doing that, in the corner of my eye, I saw another vehicle millimeters, millimeters away from my car. And I had absolutely no time to think and I had to rely solely on my instinct to react immediately to return to my original vehicle position. shaking from that experience because it was an extremely close call that could have ended tragically wrong. Now I will do my best to capture the perspective of the other driver. The driver was on the outside lane behind me. Indicates merges onto the second lane just behind my car right at my blind spot and then continues to pass me on the inside also known as undertaking. And in the exact same moment, I am attempting to merge onto that lane. Now, the question is, who would have been at fault had things gone tragically wrong? There are insurance fault determination rules which would help in situations like this. And when you cannot determine who would have been at fault, it's often split 50-50 for both drivers. And before jumping to conclusions, let me do my best to defend my perspective as to why I think the other driver would have been at fault. And there are two reasons for this. One, the other driver is attempting to pass me on the inside, known as undertaking. In Europe, this is actually an illegal maneuver and penalized. However, in North America, it's not strictly enforced and there's no real penalties associated with this. Secondly, the other driver has the vantage point to see my vehicle and my intent to merge onto the center lane. So based on that, the other driver had a clear vantage point of my car and should not have been passing me on the inside. However, I was very curious to know who would have been at fault. So I did consult some insurance specialists and they agreed that the other driver would have been entirely at fault. I do apologize for my facial expressions as I know it will haunt a lot of you. However, it was an extremely terrifying experience. The scary thing is, what really terrifies me is my mind continuously plays out the other scenario where things go tragically wrong. I can feel the collision, I can hear the metal scraping against each other, and I can feel the impact, which really does terrify me. I think it's very important to stress, while this is a huge passion and hobby for us car guys, it could also have some serious, dangerous consequences. There are obviously situations which are just outside our control, but we really have to do our part to be as proactive as possible when it comes to driving. That being said, remember to drive safe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.